observation. 1729er Zulu. Wind 160 at 08. Visibility 10. This is the Willamette Valley of Northern Oregon. It's late summer. When you see the beautiful mountains, the rivers, the fields, the sweep of the sky, you can imagine why pioneers made the long journey west. The rumble of wagons and whistle of steam locomotives are gone. And in summer months, the valley hums with the sound of aircraft engines. And no wonder, tucked in the fields near Aurora, Oregon, one of the largest producers of small airplanes in the world is quietly going about its business. Vans Aircraft Incorporated manufactures the best aircraft kits available anywhere. Every day, kits for the RV3, RV4, RV7, RV8, RV9, and RV10 roll out the factory doors destined for shops and garages in every populated continent on Earth. Van's founder is Dick Van Grunsven, or Van. He grew up on a small farm near Cornelius, Oregon. There, in the 1930s, a group of adventurous young men led by local farmer, mechanical genius, and home-built airplane pioneer Les Long designed, built, and flew several small airplanes. Van's father, Bernard, learned to fly in the Long Farm, although Depression-era finances put an end to his flying. Van and his brother, Jerry, inspired by their father's tales of past flying adventures, became aviation addicts in childhood and learned to fly as teenagers. They bought an old J-3 Cub and later a Taylor Craft and kept them on a 670-foot strip they had leveled on their small family farm. Van received a degree in mechanical engineering then served in the Air Force. A color vision problem kept him out of the fighter cockpit, but he was determined to fly. Since the Air Force wouldn't give him an airplane, he purchased a single seat, 65 horsepower Stitz Playboy. The performance was not exciting. So, Van made a number of progressive changes. Among other things, he installed a 125 horsepower engine, an improved cowling, and a bubble canopy. These improved performance, but when he flew the Playboy back to Oregon, he found the high landing speed made it unsuitable for his home strip. This outraged his famous sense of thrift, so he decided to solve the basic problem. He designed, built, and installed an all-new cantilever aluminum wing. The new wing had flaps, which combined with a reduced weight and improved CG position, reduced stall speed by over 10 mile an hour. It was now possible to land on our short farm strip. It literally flew like a new airplane, so I renamed it the RV-1. As good as it was, Van knew the RV-1 was a compromise and something better was possible. Working in a shop he had fashioned in the loft of his parents' barn, he built the all-new, all-aluminum RV-3. The RV-3 proved to be an exceptional airplane. It was fast, achieving 195 miles per hour on 125 horsepower. It was agile, with superb control harmony that made it an excellent sport aerobatic airplane. Van let a few trusted friends fly his airplane, and the response was immediate and universal. How do I get one of these? Naturally, many RV-3 builders wanted to fly this wonderful airplane with a friend so they began asking for a two-seat RV-3. The two-seat tandem RV-4 flew in 1979. It bore a strong family resemblance to the RV-3 and to Van's satisfaction had the same delightful handling qualities. The demand was immediate and large and soon hundreds of RV-4s were being built. 
Even before the RV4 flew, it became apparent that many people asking for two seats preferred side-by-side -side seating. Art Chard, a skilled craftsman who had built an RV3, was one of these. Van provided him some sketchy prototype RV4 shop plans, and Art promptly built what became known as the Chard 6. I flew the Chard 6 quite a bit, and I liked it. Even though more and more potential builders were asking for side-by-side -side airplanes, I hesitated because of the speed loss I felt we would suffer. When I finally recognized that the home-built market was trending more toward cross-country airplanes than pure sport planes, we took what we had learned from the RV4 and the Charge 6 and designed our own RV6. Despite the proven performance and superb handling of the RVs, there was still an obstacle for many. RVs were all tail draggers. Honest tail draggers, not difficult to land or handle on the ground, but tail draggers nonetheless. The RV6A changed all that. The simple free castering nose wheel was well fared, so even with the third wheel up front, the airplane was only two miles an hour slower than the RV6. Takeoff and landing distances remained the same, and the gear proved capable of handling any reasonable strip, grass, gravel, dirt, or pavement. And of course, the landing and ground handling became even simpler. The RV6 and RV6A proved to be the most popular RVs yet. But the RV4 continued to attract steady interest, so Van decided to take advantage of 15 years of field experience and reevaluate the tandem concept. The result was the RV8. A completely new design, the RV8 provided a much more spacious cockpit for both pilot and passenger, two baggage compartments, increased fuel capacity, and accommodated a wider range of engines. Of course, these improvements could not be limited to just tailwheel pilots, so the Trigear RV8A soon followed. In 1998, Van began experimenting with a new concept. Although he designed the RVs as sport airplanes, a large percentage of RV pilots used their airplanes more for weekend flying and the occasional trip, and had no particular need for blazing speed or aerobatic capability. The RV9 and RV9A were designed to fill exactly this niche. A non-aerobatic airplane with precise but docile handling, good speed on low power, and the ability to take off and land almost anywhere. The side-by-side -side cabin has slightly more leg and headroom than the RV6, and the tail was bigger to enhance stability. But the biggest difference was the wing. Designed around a custom airfoil, it was five feet longer than an RV6 or RV8 with a higher aspect ratio. The added wingspan, new airfoil, and slotted flap improved the glide and gave a reassuringly solid feel in slow flight. To prove the efficiency of the new airframe, Van powered the prototype with a small engine taken from a Cessna 152. On only 118 horsepower, the RV9A topped out at 170 miles per hour and cruised easily in the 160s. A second prototype with 160 horsepower achieved 195 miles per hour and cruised at 185. This surprising turn of speed made the RV-9A more than just a weekend airplane. It was an excellent long-distance traveler as well. Then, in 2001, Van took the aviation world by surprise and suspended new sales of the RV-6 and RV-6A. Why stop selling the most successful airplane in kit aircraft history? Because the new RV-7 was ready. The RV-7 is an improvement over the RV6 in almost every way. The reconfigured cabin has more head and legroom. Visibility over the nose is even better. The 25-foot wing holds more fuel. The useful load is greater, and the cowl accepts more engine options, including the 200-horse IO360. Introduced at Sun and Fun in 2001, the RV7 was an immediate hit. 500 were sold in the first six months it was available. In 2002, the company took a deep breath and stepped into the four-place airplane world. The RV-10 was designed as a four-person traveling airplane. 
The first step was to make sure it would carry four people, not just four seats. A large gullwing door on each side opens into a truly large cabin. It's big enough to hold four six-foot, three-inch people and provide them all with more head and legroom than they can use. Fully adjustable Oregon Aero front seats are standard. Folding rear seats extend the baggage compartment, which is accessible through a large baggage door. Performance is all RV. 60 gallon fuel tanks and 200 mile an hour speeds mean that a family can cover long distances quickly and in comfort. The efficient wing and flap system, combined with sufficient power, allow the RV-10 to operate out of short grass strips and cruise in the cool comfort of higher altitudes. Over the years, RVs have become the most successful amateur-built aircraft designs ever. Nowhere was this more evident than Oshkosh 2003. That year, about 350 RVs showed up to join the party. About 25% of the home-built airplanes registered at Oshkosh were RVs. In fact, when the registrations from the next nine most popular manufacturers were totaled, they numbered less than the RV population. What makes RVs so popular? Almost every RV pilot has his or her own reason, but it seems to boil down to just a few words. It's an exciting airplane, it's an excellent kit, and it's an unbeatable value. Value, especially, is an important word. No airplane is cheap. The question is how much will it do compared to how much it costs? RVs use affordable materials, and the kits are produced efficiently by a company that operates on a slim margin, so RVs can be completed for a modest cost. Van had always been troubled by the exaggerated performance claims that accompanied some airplanes. So to prove what the RV-3 could do, Van entered it in races and competitions whenever he could. Probably the best indicator of overall performance was the Pasmani Efficiency Competition held at Oshkosh during the 1970s. It factored in top speed, stall speeds, power, and other things to measure overall performance. The RV-3 finished first three out of four years, demonstrating a remarkable four-to-one ratio between top and minimum speeds. The RV-4 had a similar speed ratio, and even with another seat, demonstrated some startling takeoff performance. An early home movie shows Van, with a passenger, departing the by now famous farm strip in his RV-4 prototype. Airborne in about 400 feet, and passing the camera plane like it was standing still. With 160 horsepower and a constant speed prop, things get even better. The white markers on the runway are measured 100 foot intervals, 100, 200, and airborne before the 300 foot marker. Excellent short field takeoff and landing performance is typical of all RVs. With two aboard, the RV-8A is off in about 500 feet and lands in about the same distance. The RV-9A, operating with a three-knot tailwind, is airborne in just over 300 feet and stops in less than 500. The RV-7 is gone in a little over 300 feet. But all the numbers in the world don't describe the feel and precision of RV handling qualities. Aerobatic pilots rave about the RV's control harmony, roll rate, and climb ability, and delight in watching as the world revolves. The controls feel alive as the airplane responds quickly, precisely, effortlessly, an extension of your thoughts. You can almost feel the smoothness of this roll in an RV-4. Watch the response and directional stability of this eight-point hesitation roll. Let's do that again. This time, watch the way the ailerons move and the corresponding roll acceleration and rate. The airplane starts and stops precisely on a point. Another angle shows the elevators and rudder moving hardly at all during a four-point roll. 
The differential ailerons effectively tame adverse yaw as the airplane rotates smoothly around a point. Traveling pilots and their companions especially like the roomy side-by-side -side seating in the RV-7 and RV-9. The RV-8 and RV-8A offer the best of both worlds. Even more space per person, two large baggage compartments, and the super visibility and fighter-like feel of centerline seating. The RV-10 has more room yet and similar visibility for all four occupants. Kit airplanes are a mixed bag. Depending on your perspective, you either get to build it or you gotta build it. It isn't easy. It takes time, dedication, and perseverance. But airplanes of all kinds have been completed by thousands of ordinary people. All RVs are built of the most common and widely used aircraft material, sheet aluminum. The same material used in production aircraft from light trainers to large airliners. A temporary vinyl coating is applied at the factory to prevent scratching of the shiny alclad surface, both during manufacture and construction. Ribs and curved parts are heat treated and press formed. Accurate straight bends are made on a press break. Computer controlled punch presses cut out parts rapidly and accurately. These sophisticated tools make it possible to produce a fully matched hole kit. Matched hole parts are probably the biggest advance in metal airplane kits ever, so the concept is well worth a closer look. Traditionally, parts were produced without fastener holes. Assemblies were aligned, checked, clamped in position, and then drilled for the rivets and bolts that hold them together. This meant the time-consuming, sometimes tedious work of determining the position of every fastener was up to the kit builder. It was a method that worked, but with the advent of extremely accurate computer-controlled tools that small businesses could afford, a new method emerged. The airplane is modeled in a computer using sophisticated software and years of practical engineering experience. The shapes of all the parts are determined, complete with precise locations for every rivet and bolt. The computer then produces a flat pattern, which is fed to another computer controlling the punch press. A flat sheet, complete with the fastener holes, is produced, and a skilled shop staff makes the necessary bends and rolls until the original computer model is reproduced in metal. The result is parts that are so accurate that no jigging is required. The builder simply aligns the pre-punched holes and begins assembly. Building a straight airplane is simply a matter of aligning holes that are already there. All the rivet holes are pre-punched in RV-8 tail and wing components before the parts leave the factory. And on the RV-7, RV-9, and RV-10, things are even better. All the holes in the tail, wing, and fuselage are pre-punched. The rest of the kit is similar. All welded parts are finished and powder coated at the factory. Every nut, bolt, nut plate, screw, and rivet required for the basic airframe is included. A pre-molded canopy is provided. Every component of the landing gear except the brake fluid is supplied. Brand new wheels and brakes, tires and tubes, hoses, and fittings. The fiberglass engine cowl, prop spinner, and wheel fairings are molded in high-strength epoxy resins. The builder provides the engine, propeller, radios and instruments, paint, and upholstery, choosing according to his or her tastes or budget. Orders are swiftly handled by the office staff. Parts are carefully packed in a sturdy wooden crate, loaded by a conscientious and careful crew, and trucked to your door. Then the fun begins. How is a metal airplane put together? The outside skin of the airplane is a sheet of aluminum alloy. This is supported by ribs or bulkheads of formed aluminum which provide the shape and which in turn are attached to spars and longerons, which all tie together into a light, strong airframe. Building metal airplanes is a process that was designed from the beginning to be easy for ordinary people. 
Construction starts by aligning pre-punched holes and holding the assembly together with temporary fasteners called clecos. An aluminum aircraft is held together with rivets. There are two broad categories, solid AN rivets or blind pop rivets. RVs and metal aircraft in general use AN rivets because they are stronger, less expensive, and provide a smoother finish. The rivet is inserted into a hole drilled through the metal, and a bucking bar, simply a steel bar with a polished face, is placed against the tail of the rivet. An air-driven rivet gun is used to reform the shank into a permanent head, holding the parts together forever. In the blind rivet, the head is formed by pressure from a break-off shaft in the center core of the rivet. Blind rivets are used in non-structural areas and places where the builders simply can't reach with a bucking bar. Rivets on the exterior of RVs have flush heads to reduce drag and provide a smooth, pleasing finish. Depending on the thickness of the skin, it is prepared for a flush rivet by either machine countersinking or dimpling. How hard is it to rivet properly? About as hard as driving a nail. Most people, with a little instruction from someone like an experienced builder, can do acceptable riveting after a short session of practice. There are several ways to make the construction process quicker and easier, but absolutely nothing will get you further for the money than the Quick Build Kit. Available for all models except the RV4, the Quick Build option cuts building time by 35 to 45 percent. Despite the fact that it looks more like a finished airplane than a kit, the Quick Build meets all the FAA standards and complies with the 51 percent rule. The wings arrive almost complete. The builder must install one skin, hang the completely assembled ailerons and flaps, and rivet on the wingtip. Except for paint, a wing can be finished to flying status in about a week. When the fuselage comes out of the crate, you can toss in a couple of cushions off the couch, jump in, and make airplane noises. It's an essential part of airplane building. Many quick build kits have been finished and flown in less than a year. In fact, the biggest construction problem for some quick builders has been listening to the envious muttering from those who built RVs before the quick build was available. Kits include full controls for the pilot. A stick is included for the second seat, and rudder pedals for both seats are standard on the RV7, RV9, and RV10. Rear seat rudder pedal kits for the RV4 and RV8, right side brakes for the side-by-side -side airplanes, and a rear throttle for the RV8 are all available. RV7 and RV9 builders have a choice between the tip-up canopy and a sliding version with a fixed windshield. Visibility and access behind the panel is better with the tip-up, but the slider provides superior taxi ventilation and sex appeal. Almost all the items needed to complete an airplane are available through Vans Accessories Catalog, which includes exceptional pricing on Lycoming engines, avionics, Hartzell, MT, and Sensenich propellers, and a wide array of other useful items. One of the big advantages of the home-built airplane is that a builder can optimize it for whatever he or she wants to do. Electric elevator and aileron trim are available. The switch is usually mounted on the control stick for one button convenience. At the finishing kit stage, even more options are available. Preformed engine baffle kits and filtered air inlet kits keep the engine cool and clean. High quality bolt on exhaust systems are popular. Oil coolers, wiring kits, instruments, cables, brackets, Almost everything is available from Vans Accessories Catalog. Of course, building an RV is more than just riveting metal or installing wires and hoses. But there is plenty of help available. The plans and construction manuals are complete. Vans keeps the phone staffed with company representatives, all experienced RV builders themselves, five days a week to help solve any problems you may have. A company newsletter is published six times a year 
filled with builder's tips and advice from the factory, details of new products, and encouragement from pilots of just completed RVs. Getting started classes are offered several times a year in locations around the country. Several private builder's assistance centers have been established. Builders can work with skilled professionals in well-equipped shops to complete large components of their airplanes. These programs are very flexible. Builders can work just long enough to develop the skills and confidence and then finish their airplane on their own, or they can take full advantage of knowledgeable help and complete the entire airplane at the assistance center. A factory-endorsed flight training program is available to transition pilots into their new RVs safely. With so many under construction, no matter where you live, there's a good chance that somebody is building an RV nearby. By the end of 2003, about 3,500 RVs had flown in 23 countries, and new ones were flying at the rate of one a day. Many people enjoyed building so much they have ordered another, and some repeat offenders are on their fourth or fifth RV. When your RV is done, you have a useful airplane. The large panel provides space for IFR instrumentation if the builder desires, and the cabin space is generous. Real people and real baggage fit. Whether you're honing aerobatic skills or making the last turn to final after an easy thousand mile day, your RV will reward you with responsive and honest control. Most pilots sum it up by saying, this is the way an airplane should fly. So now it's 30 years since Van rolled the first RV3 out of the barn. RVs are now designed on a computer and kits are produced by 60 people working in a modern factory. Some airports are home to 25 or 30 RVs. But some things don't change. Van Grunsven still fly off the small farm strip. One of Van's employees lives on and flies from Les Long's farm. And pilots all over the world fly RVs for the same reason that Van first flew his. Whether it's a short flight for breakfast or a long cross country, a fishing trip to the back country, or flying the coastline as a flight of two, Maybe it's just an evening hop for the pure fun of it. Building and flying an RV is one of the most satisfying and joyful things a person can do. See for yourself. Contact Vans Aircraft for information on how to join the RV family. <laughs>